Okay, so we are looking at the new Pine 64 Pine phone running Mobian. And so a few things before we get started. Um, the phone, when you get it, um, you're going to need to flip it over. And back here on the bottom left or right corner, this corner here, when you're looking at the front, um, there is a little uh, tab here. And you're going to take the back of the phone off. There is a piece of plastic um, in the battery so that the battery is not going to work. And also your SD card and your uh, telephone card. And I'll do another video on that once I get, because I haven't gotten the cell phone card yet. Um, but they go in the back. So you have to take this cover off to get to them. Now, what I wanted to do here before, we, before I get uh, too deep into this, um, this is a Linux phone and I got it primarily because I would really like to get off of iOS and Android. Um, so to turn this on, there's a little power button over here. You just hit it and then you swipe up and then you put in your code to get in and then tell it to unlock. So a little bit of a lengthy process. Um, but it's, you know, not too bad. Now the phone itself, this is actually, um, it, it actually is a full Linux operating system. So you, you have shells and, uh, things that you can open. When you click the little arrow at the bottom, you end up with an application tray here, and then you end up with whatever you have running up here at the top. Now, a couple things about this thing, um, the touch screen processes that, that are here are um, a little glitchy. They're, you know, they work, but they're, you know, they need more work. Um, the, you know, the phone is really more in a, in a development environment right now. It's not uh, ready for, you know, my mom to go buy one of these phones, but um, overall it's pretty impressive. Um, you know, the, the CPU is sluggish and I'll show um, an example of when I open up a shell because this this essentially is a computer So if I plug a monitor into the USB-C port down here It'll actually drive a keyboard mouse and monitor and so this literally could become my computer so You know, it's pretty awesome to me um, But the one thing about it is is the the processor and stuff that they have on this thing is pretty slow um, the camera might it might as well not even have a camera i guess it has a camera on there just to allow people to start working on software and stuff for it but um it's it's dysfunctional at best um it it really can't take pictures worth a flip um but it does have you know a pretty good setup on here now one of the things that is kind of if you have applications open like i do now you'll notice that my app drawer is only down here at the bottom um, so one of the things I'm going to be doing is playing around with, uh, UB ports or the Ubuntu touch to see how it works on this phone. So right now we're doing the video on the, uh, Mobian, but I'm going to be switching it over to Ubuntu touch to see if it works any better. Now, one of the things that I have noticed, um, is for example, if I come down here to usage, you see how long it takes it to open applications. So it's, you know, it's fairly slow um, doing all this stuff. But this thing, when it opens up, is it always comes up saying 85% usage. So I'm really thinking that this performance um, calculator here that, that is coming up is not accurate and it, it's actually bringing up erroneous data. And, and one of the reasons that I say that is I've actually got um, the ability of SSH into the phone and I can run an H top on the, the system. And right now the H top is actually, although it could be that this app is actually what's causing it, but the, so H top right now is showing 87% usage on the CPU. So what we're seeing here looks like it might actually be, let's see if I can zoom in on it any better but i think it's about about it um but it may be that this is you know what it what it actually is because the uh the system right now is running 86 percent usage so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually kill this app 
and we immediately have gone down to 33%. Now we're down to 4%, so we're six. So incredibly, the app that they actually have here to check the usage on the phone is actually eating up all the resources on the phone so that you can't actually see what's going on. So it's, you know, it's little things like that that are a little hard to, to deal with. So the plan with this phone, and I'm gonna do, you know, a few more videos as I, as I progress through this, but the plan with the phone is to actually get um, the card so that I can actually start using this as my daily driver and start making phone calls and stuff on it to see it, how the phone system works the contact list and the texting. Um, it also already comes with um, the the main texting app that I use for Telegram. So Telegram is already on here and works. Um, so I'm just going to play around with it. I'm not I'm not expecting to use the camera or anything. Um, it also has a, a mapping program, a map program like Google Earth on here. Um, I don't know how well that works. I just playing around with it. It looks like it's pretty slack. Um, but we're going to play around with the, with the phone and see if you could actually use this. And again, this is an experiment. This is not a phone that's meant to be out in public for, you know, for every Tom, Dick and Harry to, to carry around. Um, but the build quality on this thing is very impressive. The fact that I can change the battery in the thing is even more impressive. I mean, I really, I love everything about this phone other than it's a little sluggish to use. Um, and, and I'm willing to, to deal with the sluggishness, you know, just in the, in the sake of helping to improve the product and, and try to get us a, an actual Linux phone. Because the fact that I can actually open up a terminal and use it just like I would a regular computer to log into our data center and, and those kind of play things is just incredible. I'm, I'm really excited for what I might be able to do with the phone. But again, I'm, I'm a little concerned about the, the CPU and stuff that they have on it because it is extremely sluggish to, to do too much on it. So we'll see how it goes after I use it for a, a week or two and, and then we'll report as we go through it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are going to SSH over to our the Pine phone, and then I'm gonna show a few things over there. So right now we're gonna SSH, actually I already hit it here, and we're just gonna put in the, and this is the passcode that we put into the phone itself. And so that puts us into the Pine phone. Now I'm going to do a sudo. Actually, I don't need to do that yet. So right now I'm going to do a record, which is an alias. Let me show you the alias that I actually created first. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this, so down here at the bottom, I have a uh, record alias that I created and it's running a program called WF dash recorder. And then it's just giving it a file to save the, the video into. And then if you put a dash dash audio, it'll also record the sound that goes along with it. Now in this case, I don't want the sound, so I'll leave that off. Um, but what will happen is if I type record, it will actually go out and so what's happening is everything that I'm doing on the phone right now I can actually it's actually being captured inside of a video that I can then s copy back over to my computer and so right now I'm on the phone um, so as an example if I do an LS you can see that you know I'm inside of a terminal here and everything is working um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up another shell here on my main computer and we're going to also SSH to Mobian at 192.168.1.106 and we'll put in our passcode. All right, and so one of the things I want to show you is here is the HTOP that is running on the phone. So I'm logged into the phone and recording what's going on, on on the phone itself. And you'll notice that that WF recorder is taking up quite a bit of resources as it's running. So 
you obviously want to have your battery plugged in or your the power plugged in when you're doing something like this but it actually allows you if i flip back over here to the phone it allows you to actually record the screen and see everything that i'm doing on the screen so it's it's kind of a cool feature um, to be able to do now it's going to be a little laggy while i'm doing it but um, it, it does give you the ability to to use this stuff now one thing i want to mention is this usage app that's on here i'm not sure why they don't uh, install the system monitor uh, program instead of this usage app um, the usage app if you're viewing the graph um, i'll open it up so you can kind of see um, when this thing first opens you'll see a reasonable amount of system resources being used but then as you see it jumps to 100 percent um, and usage actually is taking up 65 percent so when when usage is displaying this graph up here it really eats up all the resources on this phone so it's it's a pretty hungry thing when it's displaying the graph now if i jump over here and and view you know the the storage or or what is the thermal um this side of it I, now th this is bringing up that graph so it's probably also eating up yeah it is um this side when i click on it um the resources go down a little bit so but it, it appears that just having the app up at all is really making this thing hungry so when i click the little down or the up arrow at the bottom we can swipe up on this now i just swiped up but it didn't do anything um, for some reason you have to swipe up twice sometimes to get that thing to actually do uh, what you want it to do um, another thing about Mobian that's a little odd is that when I do hit the up arrow to, to open up, so, so you think you want to close the application or switch to a different application, there really are no processes in Mobian to do anything like that. All I can do is open up this screen, which has all of my list of running applications up here at the top, and then it has my, a smaller tray down here of all the programs and things that I have installed on the phone. So it's not really the best of, of both worlds um, as far as using the phone goes. Now, I do have a card in here, so I've got cellular service now. Um, a few things that I've noticed on here related to the phone and the chat app that's on here and the address book is if I open up the phone and we look at some of the, the phone numbers that are in here, um, there is no way to click on any of these things and actually do anything with them. Now, if I click on the phone thing, um, I, I really don't even know what it just did. Um, or no, let's see. Yeah, I don't, I really don't know what it did. It's almost like it tried to call again. Uh, if you hit the little phone icon over there, but all it's doing is adding another line and it's not actually placing a call. Um, as you can see here but the other thing is is there's no there's nothing here to create a contact so if somebody calls me that I don't know and now I want to add their phone number into my contact list there isn't a way to do that nor is there a way to copy this phone number to the clipboard so that I can then go over because what I end up having to do and I also can't do it from here there is no add contact from the contacts uh, option on the phone dialer I have to leave the phone dialer go over to the address book and then manually add them into the address book again without being able to to see anything now i don't know what just happened um because it just now it just took a minute to open it i guess um but so this is the address book and there's no way to you know if i add it in over here it does show up over on the phone dialer so it will show up over here once i add it but i have to do it all through the the other app i can't do anything from the dialer so that that kind of sucks um so and then the chat program one of the problems that i'm having with the chat program is that when it gets run it is not actually um running the like like if somebody sends me a text message um it doesn't alert me if the phone's off and even when i turn the phone back on it still doesn't alert me i have to open the the actual app up to see uh, it, that I actually have a um, that I actually ha have a text that has come in. So 
that's a little quirky. Uh, another thing that I noticed is that when I do make a phone call, um, when you put the, the phone up against your ear, it doesn't actually, it, it bl turns the screen black, but it doesn't change, it doesn't disable the screen. So you're basically just have your head up against a hot black screen, but it's still lit up and wasting battery power. So that's a, another little thing that I noticed. Um, you know, it's, it's still, it's still kind of cool. Um, see, I had to swipe twice to get that to close, but then when I go here, well, I still have to swipe twice. That one was one time. So I'm not real sure it's, it's got quite a few bugs in it. Um, I think what I'm going to try doing next is I'm going to actually try Ubuntu touch and see if it works better. Um, because Mobian is, seems to be uh, pretty buggy for most of the stuff that I've tried to do with it. Um, but other than, you know, the, the little things that they're still working on, um, it's, it's actually still pretty awesome that I'm able to do this stuff on a Linux computer and, and be able to use it like a phone. So it's, I'm, I'm still pretty pumped on what I can do on it, but it, it definitely needs some work before it could actually be used as a day-to-day -day driver and i'm not even concerned that concerned with the battery life um the battery life isn't terrible um but it's not anything close to like an iphone or an android gets um so it does have some limitations there that we'll have to work around but i'm you know i'm okay plugging it in and, and keeping the battery stored if if the other stuff works and and right now there's quite a bit of other stuff that's missing from from the process